G'day fellas and welcome to a casted game. Spawning in on the south side of the map, playing as the Marlians in the color red. It's crackety here. And in the north of the map, playing in the color yellow as the Holy Roman Empire. It's core. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a casted game. We are here on Mediterranean to witness two of the world's best players go up against one another. I say the world's best players. These guys, well, let's just put it this way. They weren't good enough for Walla Lol. And that is not, that's not me giving them a subtle dig. That was actually their name. Uh, in the uh, in the event, there was a big uh, a big event that happened earlier uh, in the week, hosted by EGC TV. Uh, if you're not familiar with that, that's called the uh, the Winter Championship, or at least the Winter Team Championship, I think it was. And their team name, they, they were teamed together with Lash. So it was Crackety Core and Lash. Their name was too good for Walla Lowen. Neither of them made it. Or rather, none of them made it, but all of them were there. So, uh, it is, uh, it's, it's, it's very sweet. Let's just put it that way. So, a little bit of an interesting opening here by Crackety. His house dropped down, obviously, near the town center, and he's just going off the straggler trees, which is definitely my recommendation. I'm a big fan of straggler openings, especially on water. Uh, we take a look over on the other side, and it looks like Core going to be doing something a little bit differently. So not going to be going for that straggler opening. And we can see the difference that it makes right now. Look at this, okay? You look at Crackety compared to Core. Core, 1 minute and 25, just coming up with the dock. And compare that down to Crackety, who's already got his first fishing boat out. That's how far behind Core is. When you go for this sort of opening with the lumber camp, had he gone for stragglers, it would have made a real difference. And you might not think that's a big difference, okay? But, I mean... Already we've got all of this food that's being gathered up here and it's going to continue. You know, every single villager that, or fishing boat that gets added here is now 20 seconds faster or 40 seconds faster or however long it is. How long does it take? 25 seconds. So about 25 seconds faster than his enemy. So every single fishing boat is going to be 25 seconds. M more more uh, length on it, let's just say that much, uh, when it comes to uh, collecting resources. But... I'm looking forward to seeing how Crackety plays this. I always feel like when, when, whenever there's a Marley in, in the game, the burden is definitely on them as to whether they want to trade. Like, you can pretty much trade in every single matchup, and just the question is whether you go for it or not. And we can see that Crackety spots out the trading post in the north of the map, and he's going to know that the trading post is going to have spawned in the south of his map. So, very easily, he could be looking for a landmark from this position. Very, very nice one for him there. Uh, and uh, that'll help him out a huge amount if he does opt for trade. Obviously, against the Holy Roman Empire, it's one of those things that you've got to be careful about, right? You don't want to invest too much in trade because they've got some great timings that they can hit, especially when you're talking about water timings. And speaking of water timings, take a look at this. Core going with the second dock already in the Dark Ages. Double dock, Dark Age, baby. A double dock, Dark Age, double Dark Age dock. Let's go with that. There's a lot of Ds in there. Um, and uh, <laughs> I'm just going to walk away from that one slowly. Uh, make sure I don't step on anyone's toes. Uh, but uh, yes. Anyway, <laughs> uh, Crackety now going to be adding in a couple of houses. So with that excess wood that he's collecting from the uh, from the wood line, instead of throwing it down on an extra dock, he's just going to be adding in a couple more houses and I suspect maybe even a pit mine. So that could be an option for him. We do see him adding in a mining camp, so going to be heading to that alternative instead. Did drop the sheep down. Still yet to scout out that neutral trading post in the corner. Uh, but uh, obviously he's going to know that it is there as an option for him. The old, other alternative is that he just doesn't even look for the trade landmark. The Saharan Trade Network is a landmark that telegraphs your strategy to your enemy. And basically, I, I think because of that, there's an element of... There's an element of brain games that you could say, or mind games rather, is probably a better way of saying it, when it comes to that landmark. Or, or just the, the landmarks for the Malians in general. You know, quite often we see people go for the Mansa Quarry and then switch up the, their mind and be like, actually, I'm going to do trade this game because Malian trade is just that good. And by the same token, we see players like Salami, who's like, well, I'm, I'm going to go for the trade landmark, the Saharan Trade Network, but I'm not necessarily going to be doing trading with it. And uh, people get baited because of that. But another dock going to be coming down now for Core. Very interesting. So three door opening, or three dock opening rather, but three doors opening for, for Core as well on that north side. Age up still yet to come through at the moment for either player. Four minutes 25, going to be crossing that barrier. And is the villager just attacking the scout? He's not building the dock, he's just attacking the scout. I feel like that's not an efficient use of time from Core's villager. Maybe he misclicked there, maybe that's intentional. But he, I mean, he's taken it out. And it's going to be the Saharan Trade Network that comes in for Crackety. Uh, interestingly, not putting it in a spot that is going to be advantageous when it comes to trade, rather just using it as a bit of an extension for defense, at least for the moment. But I guess there's always the alternative that maybe he just looks to wall off his enemy, maybe from a, a position like this, and then just actually trade 
across it. Or I guess the other option that he's got is he just gets a palisade wall and draws the palisade wall out to the berry bushes right here. And then the traders are kind of forced to take that angle. Like they come out, it's a bit more, or rather it's a bit less efficient, but then they're hitting the trade network. And look at this, look at this already coming through from Core. He knows exactly what is up. He says, it's not happening. It's not happening, Crackety. I know you. I know what you're about. I know what kind of life you live. I know who you are. And we see without even scouting the landmark that Crackety is going for, Core is sending a villager down towards that position. But it could get scouted out here. Crackety on the way back. We're right on board with him as he continues heading back. And you might even see just some villagers starting to come out from Crackety just to, to do a counter wall. That's the most common thing that we see. And where's that villager? There it is. Escaping through the fog of war. So sneaky. So sneaky. Not a single clue right now in Crackety's head. Very, very smart play. But now now we reach a bit of an interesting point. Crackety, well, good luck to him. He's going to be on a single dock. I, I, I was thinking of this as his dock. I'm like, yeah, he's got the two docks here. I'm like, that, hold on. That's, that's, it's, it's, that's a big dock. That's a big dock. That's what she said. That is a big dock. Uh, he's still going with two docks. Uh, YouTube, don't demonetize me. <laughs> was that villager? Oh, was that villager just to fake him out? Did he, did he, was he, oh my God, that's actually big brain. You know, we, we talk about Salami being big brain. Was, was he scared? He didn't see it. He was scouting it out. Look at that. It all comes in. Core's brain actually huge right now. He sends the villager across the map to begin the walls. Gets caught halfway. He's like, actually, I'm just making a dock here. Don't worry, bro. It's fine. Starts attacking the, the scout. The scout's like, hey, you know what? I don't want to lose that fight. I'm just going to go away. He's just making a dock. I'm not going to harass him. Cancels the dock when the scout goes and subsequently walks the build the rest of the map. Very, very nice opening. But it looks like we've got double sprinkled ship opening here from Crackety on the defensive. Core going to be looking to head into some demo ships here. Triple dock on the north side. And his main focus here is just going to be on water production. That's going to be it. Doesn't really want to focus on anything castle age orientated. It's all about winning the water here because as this, the old saying goes, you win the water, you win the game. Actually, I think it's you control the water, you control the spice. A anyway, you, got, you guys you guys get where I'm coming from though, right? It's all about water control when it comes to these matchups. And we do see Core going for a bit of an interesting strategy. Now, I, I feel like Sprinkled Ships and Archer Ships beat mass Archer Ships with demos, at least initially. Eventually, the this, um, Archer Ships do win out. You gotta be so careful. Demo Ship coming through. Oh, I don't, I don't like that one. He's gonna go for a split, but is he, he's just not gonna get anything as a result. No, he will get the War Canoe. He's chasing him down. He's got the sails going. Look at him go. Sprinting around. And he manages to dodge it out. He could actually turn around and get the shots off. He does. Beautiful micro coming out from Crackety right there. At the same time on the south side. Second de demo ship coming in. Looks like it gets a big explosion. But fortunately, it's on a hunting canoe. Manages to take out the one. But beautiful micro coming in from Crackety on that north side. That was an that was a dead sprinkled ship. If it wasn't for that beautiful micro. Great use of man the sails right there. Absolutely beautiful stuff coming out, but take a look at this on the south side. We have got a complete wall in on this trading post. There is no trade happening today. No no trade for you. That is what is happening. And beautiful brain size right now from Core Brain Size. Also referred to as general tactics. Generally unexpected tactics is brain size. So as your brain size does increase, uh, the tactics that your enemy doesn't expect you to do, that you do and are effective, uh, also increase. So... <laughs> I hope I've explained that well. Uh, but but <laughs> the good stuff, Core. Good brain good brain usage. <laughs> All right. We've got upgrades starting to come through now. Plus one range attack coming through for both of these guys. So both of them looking for that early blacksmith. I'm, I'm trying to find it. There it is. There's the blacksmith on Crackety's side. Starting to build that mass up on water. Keeping all the sprinkled ships together. Archer ship's going to be sitting behind them. And I, I like this composition that he's got out at the moment, right? So the, the, the sprinkled ships together with the archer ships... Archer ship's going to be protecting the sprinkled ships from any potential um, demos, and then the the sprinkled ships able to take out uh, the the large amounts of galleys. But now heading out across the map, he spots out his enemy, begins to work towards him. Plus one still yet to come through, so he's going to be taking a battle that's not advantageous for him just yet. Needs that plus one in. Little population blocked for the moment, but then drops down the house. And look at this. Look at this. He just knows. He knows how much of a sneaky little, a sneaky little, I don't even know what to call him, a sly little shrew. Is, is that what you, <laughs> is, is that the best way to say it? Uh, I'm not sure exactly what the best way to say it is, but uh, Core knows. Let's just put it that way. Core knows. 
He doesn't know what the landmark is, but he doesn't need to know what the landmark is. He just knows what Krakeny is going to be up to. Playing the Marlians. It's, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Whether you like it or not, it's going to happen. Archer ship's now moving up for core. Decent numbers here. Going to start focusing down those fishing boats. He's got to pull them back. Krakeny losing the first of the fishing boats. Demos. Not not slick enough moves there. Gets taken out. Now the archer ship's coming out for Krakeny. Starting to rise in number core up to 16 archer ships. Now we're starting to talk about some serious numbers. And this is where the archer ships gain their advantage. And you can see Krakeny. He doesn't want to get caught behind. He knows how important it is to maintain archer ship numbers. And he starts pushing out as well. Keep in mind, he's got the warships in the backside. A little bit of an attack over here. Some scout on scout action. But never mind that. You can search for that on the... Uh, well, on, on, with your incognito browser later. And now, Krakeny losing water pretty handily here. Demo ships coming in. Get taken out. There goes number one. Second one going to get focused down as well. But still, the number's looking solid for Core. Krakeny down to five warships. Core down to nine. But still, you definitely prefer to be Core in this position as three remain out on the open ocean. And only two of them were on the front side. So now Krakeny almost giving away the water at this point in time. Core in such a great spot. And where does Krakeny go from here? Because I, I, I feel like for Krakeny... The answer is diversifying outside of, of of what he's got. So what does he have at the moment? He's got land, he's got water. There's not much more than that. Maybe air, maybe underground, subterranean, that sort of thing. Uh, no, what am I talking about? I'm talking about trade, baby. I'm, to I'm, to I'm talking about trade, baby. You guys know the meme, right? Uh, I'm talking about... What does he say? <laughs> the guy... He, he, there's a, like a Canadian snowboarder or something. And he's 16 years old and he was talking about how he was getting so many drinks. Oh yeah, I think he's, I think the quote is, I'm talking about Mountain Dews, baby. <laughs> Something like that. Oh God, it was pretty funny. Uh, but but Krakeny needs to start thinking a bit more about Mountain Dews at this point, uh, just because he's lost water. It is completely over. And so he needs to start diversifying his interests. So maybe he can go to Castle Age from here. But, oh my Lord, look at the macro from Krakeny. 33 villages. Where are you, what are you doing with this, with this wood right now, Krakeny? Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Oh, it's ex it, this is worse than BitConnect right now. Krakeny is getting hugely scammed. I mean, I say it's worse than BitConnect. I'm sure there's a couple guys out there that were done by it, so apologies. Uh, it, I, I probably hit a, 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 a little bit too close to home there with that one. Now, Krakeny should be trading to this position. I, ideally, he wants to be making sure it's, it's touching the edge of the map, his market. Unless he can get a market in there. I don't think he's going to be able to fit it, but good luck to him if he can. He might need to chop, chop down a few trees here. Uh, but you can see what Krakeny's plan is. And he, he's going big with this as well. Look at this. He, he is intent. So what does he do here? And he's, he's going to pull villagers down to siege down the walls. So Krakeny wanting to go for the transition. Not being allowed to by Core. Now, subsequently, Krakeny looking to wall up. But remember, with Core having control of the water. Oh, look at this. So cheeky. Core having control of the water. It means that he is going to be in a great spot because he's going to be able to deny this. And he's always going to have access to Krakeny's base. Always going to have access to the trade line. Worst case scenario, he comes in on the front side. He's like, what up? A little bit of a transport ship for you. Don't mind if I do. So, Core is in a really good spot. And behind this, we see him going Castle Age. And that's exactly what he wants to do. Go Castle Age. Honestly, he can go for a really quick Imperial here. He puts down a Ragnar's Cathedral. Probably a bit of a weird spot, if I'm being honest. I would have loved it, like, over, over here. Just somewhere a bit safer. This is kind of... It, it's very, like... Core, I just hope you don't lose the water. Let's just put it that way. I, I hope I'm not foreshadowing here. Uh, but we do see that Krakeny does eventually get the market down in the right spot. So he's got a home market and begins to throw down a whole bunch of uh, of markets himself. And Core only sees the one market for now. But he should know that, that this is a big boy boom. You know, we often talk about boom sizes, right? This is one of the biggest booms I've ever seen. This is probably the biggest... This is... this. Yeah, oh, yeah. Without a doubt, this is the biggest boom I've ever seen on with, with regard to trade this is huge and core now reaches the castle age and so the the question now begins getting begged and i, I gotta take a photo of this give me a give me a second guys i do apologize in advance we gotta get this this is this is going up for the thumbnail right here this is the biggest trade boom in history not the biggest trade deal not the worst trade deal the biggest trade look at the look at all of the freaking look at the markets going up right now for crackety this is absolutely huge Still under attack on the front. Looks like Core, with a 39 military production at, or military at the moment, he's just going to fall back. So in Core's position, what do you want to do? Pick up the relics? Go, go Imperial. That's it. Pick up the relics, go Imperial. That's that's your goal. And you can see he's, he's got 31 vils on gold. Uh, how, ma how many uh, prelates are we talking here? He's got two prelates. So probably one in the Arkan, which isn't doing anything. And then one needs to be out collecting relics, which it's going to do. And now Horseman coming in onto the trade line. 
So Crackity got to start thinking about throwing down, you know, maybe a bit more of a passive wall across here and really got to make sure he's covering all of his bases. Let's check in with the trade numbers though and see how he's doing. 16 traders at the moment. It continues to rise steeply. Scout going to be under attack. Beautiful little walls on the backside here. He's going to be able to keep the narrative close to home. Make sure none of those, none of those annoying knights get through because if those knights do get through, Crackety going to be in a whole world of pain. You can see the horseman down here for the moment. Still doing a decent job. Keep in mind, Crackety did opt for the landmark. Where is it? I know it's around here somewhere. There it is. Siren Trade Network. The knight's going to be coming in shortly. Walls coming up. You can see right now. Look at the, the villager coming in. Crackety basically says, mm -mm -mm -mm. You, don't, you don't get to do that. You don't get to do that. That is not how this works. Uh, but Crackety's still trying. And he's going to need to hold on. He needs Donzos or something quickly. He's got Donzos out, actually. He's got five Donzos. Nine in queue. He's managed to clean up all of the horsemen that are down here. And we see the rewall was being attempted by core. And, and now this is where it's like, this is where it gets hard. What does Crackety do here? Because he's on the defensive. He's trading like a madman. But how does he win this game? 22 traders. It's rising slowly. Slowly he's getting back on board. But we're seeing a full water dominance turning into a little bit of a question mark because the tempo advantage is definitely with the Holy Roman Empire. And the question is going to be whether Core can finish it off. Arrow Slit's now coming through on all of these outposts. All of them. He's cleaned up the Knights. Score advantage ever so slight for Core. Get off my screen, population capacity. I don't care about you. <laughs> Why are you showing me that? It, it is the least relevant thing to when I'm casting. Get out of here. And more walls coming up. Look at this. Look at these walls, how, how beautiful they are. I wouldn't be surprised if we see... Oh, actually, no, he'll just wall like that. That's fine. I was going to say, I thought he would have deleted the house. Donzos, beautiful. Great job here by Crackety. Just cleaning up the knights, but... I mean, Kaw's doing the right thing, yeah? Like, he, he wants to be raiding his enemy. The only issue is he's having trouble because the Donzo numbers are high enough here that they can defend. And this is something that I've often theorized, right? Elsback Palace? Elsback Palace? Core, come on, you're not in that good of a position you can be going Elsback Palace? Oh. <laughs> He's blocking the Elsback Palace! He's blocking the Elsback Palace with, with the traders! Get out of town. <laughs> oh, this game is good. This game is good. I'm, I'm enjoying this game. Tries to put it down again. The traders move with him. Okay, he, he gets it down though. Elsback Palace going to be denying the trade out here. So he's going to have to start thinking about a second market. And that's exactly what he does. Walls out the first one. He says, you know what? We don't want it anymore. You just keep it. These traders, the, these guys are gone. That's all right. That's okay. That's not, a, that's not a problem. And now all those Donzos are moving up to the north. Going to try and get through here. But it looks like it might be a little bit too late. Indeed. Elsback Palace going to get up here. And look at the walls coming in from core just doing everything he can to stop this the Ellsback palace gets up look at that beautiful thing your trade ain't nothing i said earlier in the game you ain't trading and i mean it you ain't trading don't even try now a quick gate gonna be coming in all the traders heading in the the wrong direction he's gonna need to reallocate them there we go the gates up all right everyone turn around everyone turn around come on back here 128 gold is all he's gonna be getting that's the difference going from 180 gold down to 120 gold and now these villagers, yeah, they're doing the right thing. Look at Core. Oh my lord, he's so beautiful. But you know what Crackety could do right here, which would be really smart? Try and look for this corner here. Let's see if he does it. Let's see how flexible he remains. Or whether he's just going to focus on this trade post closer to his home. Already we can see the income climbing. It's on 2,600 gold a minute. And he's just actually going to focus on, the, on the, the, tr the market that's inside the walls. Safely inside the walls here. Mining camp coming out. Relic with the prelate. So he's going to be looking to get some emplacements on these outposts, looking to extend that range. And now Men at Arms going to be focusing down. Core is looking to clean up this game right now. But hold on a minute. crackety has got the cows out. Never count a man out unless he's got, unless the fat lady is sung. I don't know why I was thinking about cows with that. But I guess, look, I don't want to offend any fat ladies out there. But anyway, <laughs> we move forward. We move on. We continue going forward because Knight's now on, on the trading line. How many traders are we talking about here? We're talking about 46 traders active at the moment. Musafati doing a decent job cleaning this up, and they'll also be decent at cleaning up this position in the north. But look at the outpost going down. Core knows how important it is to shut this down. Still working overtime when it comes to the ocean. Look at how many fishing boats he's got out here. Plenty of fishing boats out here. And now just continuing to push forward with the men at arms. Musafati, where are they? We need them up here sooner. 
Age up coming through for Imagaris and only 10 villagers on it. And in a bit of a weird spot as well. I would have loved the wall to have come all the way across here. I mean, he still could technically get it down. He's going to have to delete the barracks, delete the, the houses here. And Sacred Victory now coming through. So Core going to be attempting a Sacred Victory at the same time, pushing with the Men at Arms. Elite upgrades have come through on those Men at Arms. Core is fighting elite units against his opponent, who is stuck in the Castle Age. Oh, rather, I should say he's stuck in the Castle Age. He just got to the Castle Age. So fighting his best, trying his best to hold on for dear life. Emplacements coming through. Plenty of outposts up here. It is outpost wars along this trade route. And you can see how desperately Core is fighting to stop this trade. How important it is to him that this trade is denied. And now continuing to work on more and more of these markets, making sure that they do go down because there's still three traders going to them. Villagers turning their attention towards the outposts. Cannon emplacement about to come through and about to say goodnight to all of these villagers on the front line. He, take, he hit, fires them in the wrong direction. Let's see if he hits the villagers now. It should be a one-shot if it gets off the shot. He gets it off and he takes out... Oh my god, there were so many villagers he just killed. There were so many villagers. He's killed 52 workers already this game. But now the next in play... He, he goes instead for the... Uh, uh, for the cannons uh, after he gets the... Uh, <laughs> oh my god, I'm losing my mind right now. Instead of going for the fortification, he goes for the cannons after the fortification. And still focusing down the, the outpost, but you can see the struggle that he's having with it. So many villagers brought towards this position. This is where the major fight is beginning. But keep in mind, Sacred Victory approaches behind this. This whole time, Core is just working to control this area, but he's still got something going on behind it, and it's stonewalled up. Now, over on this east side, there's nothing stonewalled, but it doesn't matter because Core is controlling the central lake, so there's no chance of any drop coming through. The, the, the highest chance of a breakthrough is just going to be through the Palisade Walls and then onto the Sacred Site. It's going to be so hard right now for Crackity to even think about contesting that 3,200 gold in the bank for him at the moment. So definitely struggling with regard to the, his food and wood. You can see he hasn't actually done any market trading at the moment. Literally zero. And the cannon emplacement never comes through. Finally, the cannon emplacement on the backside will come through. And this is what's going to be able to hold onto this. He, once he fires down on this, let's see if he how much damage he does. Cannon emplacement should be looking right here. I don't know where it's firing. Okay, hit the single unit. But the keep going to come down. There we go. Now you can see the damage coming out from that cannon emplacement. If this keep comes up, it doesn't mean Crackity's out, out of the woods just yet. A siege workshop back here. A single trap or a single bombard. And the parade will be rained on. The keep looks to go up. Lord Doubt not shining upon this keep today. And now the Musa Fadi turning their attention towards this single outpost. The consequence of going for these greedy emplacements and not setting up your home of emplacements back here mean that your enemy is now able to take advantage of that. Elsback Palace, looking like it might be a bit of a run by here. Veteran Musafadi going to be intercepting a whole bunch of hand cannoneers that were coming out. Instead of going for Lanch Connect or Archers, he just goes for hand cannoneers straight away. Still the numbers looking pretty decent for Crackity. How is he managing to do this right now? The trader numbers still looking pretty... He's up to 77 traders at this point. A huge amount of traders coming out for Crackity. He is focusing 100% on Musafati. Able to break through the walls. Not, not that they were his walls. Rather, not that they weren't his walls. And now looking to actually challenge that sacred victory. Stonewall did come up over on the east side, but it's not going to matter. As the ring around the rosy happens, core, not enough stone in the bank to drop down a keep on this sacred site. Single Lanch Connect coming out. And this should be a decent little hold that, that uh, Core is able to do here. He'll be able to rally towards this position. He'll be fine. But the main problem he's got, these traders, these traders, they're still working overtime. 80 traders. This is full trade against full water. 100% water against 100% trade. He lost the water. And this is something I've been theorizing for a long time, right? Because we treat, we, we treat water as this, this holier than thou mechanic that if you lose... You can't win. You need to have water to win. But I think the reality is, if players play a little bit longer and have a backup plan, that they can still have a chance. I mean, Crackity played absolutely out of his mind right there and, and Core made a mistake, right? What was the mista mistake from Core? He just didn't get emplacements on these first towers. He was a bit more greedy with it. He was trying to put emplacements on these towers. You get these emplacements in, these guys are going to cover your towers. Your enemy can't siege them down. So I think that definitely hurt him a lot. 
But Raid's now coming through. Musa Fadi, notorious for their raiding ability. Also going to look to clean up a knight here. No elite status on those knights just yet. A little bit of a chase through. Ignoring the town center. He looks for more villagers. Villager count at the moment for course. 75 villagers. Crackety here on 131 villagers. Of which 80 are traitors. It's a huge amount of traitors. Does he have any traders on the, the trading highway, as I like to call it? He's got two traders that are somewhere else. I don't know exactly where they are. Madrasa coming down now. Reaches the Imperial Age. Where is his landmark, actually? Keep going to be under pressure. Trebuchet is out. I, why can't I see the landmark? Am I blind? Oh, it's down here. Hunt of the Fortress. The Fort of the Huntress, rather. Hunt of the Fortress. <laughs> I guess technically it still works. Uh, but uh, Trebuchet now going to be looking to siege down these stone walls. So he's going to be able to break through on that position. Elsback Palace has the upgrade. The emplacement going to be firing down. The relic inside also going to be increasing that range. Up to 10.8 range on the Springle. 12 range on the cannon. The main thing here for Core now. He needs to start repairing the stone wall. And replacing the stone wall. It's going to be a really big, a really important part of it. Musa Fadi coming in. Numbers here looking pretty decent, but it's doubtful that this keep actually gets up. He's contesting the sacred site. Look how much damage gets done by those elite Musafati. And now more units going to be coming out. That's going to be enough. He, he just holds the sacred site for a little bit longer until the reinforcements can come through. I don't know. It, oh, these these Musafati came in from the north side, didn't they? He actually did a full ring around. And now that Treb about to break through on the stone wall needs to pull these villagers up. Don't know what's happening there with that stone mine. And needs to pull these villagers up so that he can go bam and rewall because immediately we can see this, the Musa Fadi coming through. These guys have stealth. They've got first strike as well. So they're going to come out of stealth. And oh my lord, they absolutely destroy. Holy moly. They completely evaporated those men at arms. Funneling through the gap right now. Elsback Palace completely ignored. I think originally you wanted to place the Elsback. Where was it? Like somewhere around here. Maybe that would have potentially held the sacred side a bit better, but. Core just getting eviscerated in that fight. And Crackety's easily bought himself enough time right now. The military advantage is huge here for Crackety. How does Core even hold this? Elite Musa Fadi? What do you do against this? Mass archers? Mangonels won't work. Horsemen aren't going to work. Knights won't work. Lanch Connect. Lanch Connect and archers are the only thing that you can do. But look at Crackety go. So many units. And look, it's only Musa Fadi in, in queue. He's only making Musa Fadi. Lanch next coming out. Get completely destroyed as well. I mean, they, they do a decent job of, of dealing damage here, but this, the numbers just aren't the best. And he's just rallying in the units like little bit by little bit. And the Musa Fadi is so solid. And look at the numbers that he's got in the rear. Still couldn't get that rewall through. L's back under pressure now as well. No emergency repairs for him at this stage. Might need to drop down a town center on there, but he's got bigger problems to worry about. Six, how's 66 Musa Fadi for you? Hold on a minute. 72 Musa Fadi for you. And now they're going to start focusing down all of all of the barracks here. And Core's got a problem. Is trade really that good that you can just ignore water? I mean, he didn't ignore water. He fought for it. He lost water. You can lose water. Invest in trade. Or is it just a classic case of don't mess with the Malians? Are the Malians that good that you can just lose water? And, tr and Core did a really good job to shut down trade, right? He did incredibly well. He pushed forward. He went for an Ellsback Palace out of everything. But maybe that was the trap. He didn't need the Ellsback Palace. He could have just done it with a, a normal keep and gone and, and made his own economy much much greater behind this. He's sitting on 81 vils right now. He should be on 130. He should have a powerhouse of an economy under this Akin and this Arkin. And there's not a single... And he could get it for his lines. Crackety, Crackety wins. What an insane game. How is it even possible that Crackety can pull that back? Beautiful stuff from Crackety. Fellas, go check out Crackety. Go check out Core. Go check out these two content creators. Incredible players. Incredibly talented. Very exciting game. I hope you've enjoyed that one. We'll catch you guys in the next one.